Good evening, everyone. In this world of immense innovation, where technology keeps pushing us towards the horizon of changes, we, the interns of IEEE Kerala section, brings you the ultimate platform to channel your thoughts, color your space, talk without limits. I'm Alina Narobin from the interns team, and I'll be the MC for this session. For today's session, I wholeheartedly welcome Archana P. Malaya, Director of Climate Hood. She would talk about Green Star, Blue Planet, and the future in store. If you have any doubts, please do feel free to put it up in the live chat on the YouTube. We shall answer it all at the end of this session. Over to you, Archana. Thank you, Alina. I will share my screen. Hope it's visible. Yes. Okay. First of all, I would like to begin by thanking IEEE Kerala section for providing me a space to talk without limits. So before I begin, I would love if the participants could try to guess what today's topic is all about. Uh, I would like to know what comes to your mind when you read green star, blue planet, and the future in store. So as you are trying to guess it, I shall give a brief introduction about myself, uh, which I think will help you to find out what this topic is all about. So uh, myself, Arsena P. Malia, I'm a fresh graduate in electronics and communication engineering from LBS Institute of Technology for Women. So uh, during my college days, uh, I had served as the secretary of IEEE SP LBS ITW and was an NSS volunteer and also a member of Amateur Astronomers Organization or ASTRO and was the member board of directors of Climate Youth Fraternity called Climate Hood. As part of these organizations, uh, I have had the privilege to speak on wide range of technical and non-technical topics like AI for communication, climate change, galaxies, etc. Uh, and this had helped me to get a placement in Ernest and Young and Cognizant, but then I decided to remain a Veleila Patadhari and prepare for higher studies. So uh, today here I am before you as speaker for Color Your Space Talk Without Limits by IEEE Kerala section. And uh, this is my first presentation in public domain after a very long time. So uh, usually I don't give such elaborate introduction about myself, but uh, today this happened because mainly due to three reasons, I would say. The first thing is uh, I wanted to help you, like to identify what might be the topic. Like is it related to astronomy or is it about engineering or maybe is it about climate change? I think by now you must have guessed what the topic is all about. And the, another thing is the other day I received mail from Divya asking for my designation and I was left wondering what I'm doing with my life. So. Uh, this intro just gives a self-confidence boost you can consider, right? And then the third and most important point is that this topic is basically for everyone, regardless of your background, your age, your area of study. Though uh, I think uh, more engineers might be listening to this, uh, whatever, you, whatever you do, whatever your background is, whatever your age is, I'm sure that uh, there will be at least one takeaway for everyone from this talk, which will for sure help you in future as well as help all of us in the future. Uh, I, have any, I have tried to ensure that it doesn't get boring, but yeah, let's see. So I, I think you must have guessed what the topic is all about. Let's try to dissect the topic one by one. So. Which star must, might I be talking about? Because green star, uh, well, sun, our primary source of energy is a star, but was it green? Like, look at the image, or think about the beautiful drawings that we had made when we were kids. Uh, we used to color it yellow or maybe orange or something like that. Yeah, but sun is a green star, okay. More specifically, a green-blue star whose peak wavelength lies in the 
transition area on spectrum between blue and green. So, uh, but when we look at the sun, it appears to be white or yellowish white as shown in the slide. So yeah, the green star in the title refers to our dearest sun. Now, this blue planet must be an easy, it must be easy to guess, isn't it? Uh, no brownie points for guessing this right, because of course, I am referring to our mother Earth. And then comes the future in store. So, well, I'm no prophet to tell you what's in store for us, but whatever it may be, good, bad, or the ugly, it will be us, the youth of today, who are going to experience it tomorrow. And let's hope that we would be weaving a beautiful future for ourselves. Uh, I guess by now you must have got the clear idea about where this talk is heading to. Uh, yeah, it's about climate change, but of course, let me assure you that this isn't going to be filled with facts and reports and usual things, which usually students just bluff for the exams when a question on sustainable engineering or climate change comes up. So I have tried to uh, combine the various topics which were covered during previous Color Your Space sessions with my topic towards the end. And uh, I think it may benefit the future engineers, entrepreneurs, and almost everyone who is listening to the talk. Uh, I hope so. So yeah, this is... Absolutely. Can you make it to full screen? Uh, okay. Yeah, it is fine. Hello. Yeah, okay. okay. I hope I'm audible also. Yes, yes. Okay. So uh, I have seen that at least a majority of people think that climate change is very boring topic. Uh, but even we can see that social media influencers often uh, tend to ignore this topic, thinking that it is not of great demand. So uh, today I shall try to put some light on interesting findings, which will help us to relate more to this phenomenon. Okay. Uh, and also I will try to give some baby steps, which anybody can adopt in their life. And some small minimal kind of tips, which, uh, which some interesting tips as well, which will help us to, uh, to go forward with a more sustainable lifestyle. And also towards the end, we can see if climate action is just a philanthropic activity or are there ways in which we can be successful in our lives with climate action as a, as a means. So, now, what is climate change and why should I care? So, uh, of course, by now everyone must have heard about climate change and Everybody knows it, like long story short. Uh, anything that we do, everything, like agriculture, maybe traveling, anything, production, uh, maybe attending the webinars like this, or cooking, or even breathing, everything gives out uh, gases like carbon dioxide and other gases which trap the sunlight. Uh, these gases, known as uh, greenhouse gases, help to keep the earth warm. But as the amount of these greenhouse gases in atmosphere is increasing due to our activities, the Earth's temperature have begun to rise alarmingly and we know we have started seeing its impact already. So let's see why should I care? Like why should each one of us care? Uh, this report, uh, this is a image from a report. The report is a global risk report 2021, like the latest report of, by World Economic Forum. So uh, this is not to make you bored, but let me just try to highlight the risk and consequences 
of widening inequalities and increasing social fragmentation that we have due to uh, main, this report mainly focuses uh, the inequalities due to covid-19 pandemic but of course you can see that uh, top 10 risk in terms of lively, likelihood we can see that there is extreme weather climate action failure uh, natural disasters biodiversity loss human made environmental disasters so we can see that uh, most of the risk based on likelihood as well as based on impact we can see that most of the most of them are environmental uh, comes under environmental category okay and uh, so we can see how how grave the situation is we all uh, we, we we all must actually realize that uh, this extreme weather conditions and biodiversity loss, natural disasters, all these will be having direct impact on us. Like for a huge time now, if I remember exactly since my eighth standard onwards, something I have been reading about climate change in books. But during those times, or even during the time of engineering, uh, we we used to think that at least I and my uh, people around me, I had seen that we used to think that uh, it is something happening somewhere alien to us. It is not affecting us directly. But now we can see that the the pattern is changing. The, it has started to affect us directly and uh, we have started to see its effect. Uh, even some studies claim that uh, if the climate change is not controlled, if this goes out of our control, there are chances that more uh, pandemics like COVID-19 are likely to ha happen in future as well. So this is one report which I think all of you must take seriously about and maybe do some research on it because I'm not uh, going to go deep into it and make it boring. So now this process of climate change, of course, again, uh, we all know it. Like we can see that it's all interconnected. Uh, here we can see like the beginning is the end and the big end is the beginning. You can see like that in the sense, uh, whatever we do is emitting greenhouse gases. We can see uh, for industry, like I will start from the last point, industry. For industry to work, we need raw materials. Uh, for that, we uh, either go for, cut the forest or do de de deforestation. Deforestation also happens for agriculture, for industry, for providing food for us. All these things are interconnected so whatever we do in everyday life is a minor cause for climate change we can say so if we are trying to change our lifestyle we can uh, provide a good uh, solution for solution for climate action so these are some of the causes of climate change but we can say that all of these are interconnected as well so uh, as the output of industry we get products and products uh, we can see how waste is generated and also animal breeding not really animal uh, even agriculture all those things also cause climate change now the consequence of climate change is also i'm just uh, running through these topics because uh, i assume it's it would be boring to go on uh, more on this and maybe uh, we all know the main issues so we know if the global temperature is continuing to rise, the sea level will rise at an alarming level. And if you if you are somebody who follows current affairs, of course you must have seen how uh, recent recently in some even in regional news channels it was reported uh, how uh, cities like Kochi, Mumbai will be under water by 2030. So maybe we all will lose our homes like. Uh, Kerala floods are still in our fresh in our memory. So such incidents will happen for sure in future if we don't start acting now. And extreme weather conditions also. So uh, like we have reached a point where people only uh, try to listen to us when we uh, speak in terms of economic prospects. So here we can see that uh, two of the most expensive climate disasters in last two years uh, had happened in India, that is cyclone Amphan and the monsoon flooding during June, October month of 2019. So such extreme weather conditions, uh, they also cause economic loss as well as uh, human loss, human resource loss as well. And we have about health concerns. So we need to uh, 
realize that exposure to extreme and prolonged weather conditions can cause disorders in us. Uh, not only really physical disorders, we know that the amount of uh, respiratory diseases are increasing. People affected by cancer is increasing. Uh, we can see new new diseases coming uh, in news day by day. The number of diseases have started to increase and also all these things are having an adverse effect on our mental health as well. So a mental health issue is also something which has been in news these days, which everyone has started to emphasize and uh, try to uh, educate people on. So we can see that climate change affects each and every aspect of our life. So and risk to nature. Now, one of the main issues I think uh, we face is that we always say about protecting the nature, protecting the wildlife, uh, as if we are somebody from outside who is going to protect the nature. So one thing that we need to clearly understand is that risk to nature, risk to nature or risk to biodiversity are in fact risk to ourselves. So we can see uh, if uh, we can take the case of Chernobyl or anything. Uh, you can see that in such calamities, it is the humans who are facing the biggest uh, impact. Because if we go to the site now uh, where such disasters have happened, we can see that the uh, wildlife or the nature have flourished there. The greenery have come back. It's just that the effect it, effect it had on humans have still not been overcome. So uh, we need to always realize that nature is not something that we have to protect. We need to protect nature so that we can protect ourselves from ourselves. So it makes sense to you. So now this number, uh, this two with lot of zeros. So this, what this number actually says is that uh, the number of people who might be uh, forced to flee from their homes. Okay. Uh, that is by 2050, more than 200 million people will be forced to flee their homes. So maybe I and you might be one of them. We cannot uh, say anything for sure. And this, this is something which had a huge, huge impact on me. And I think uh, this is something which had made me a climate activist, you may say. Uh, so this is something that says that there are 300, 300 plus contaminants have been detected in the umbilical cord of blood of newborns. Now, you can see how grave the situation have become. Like even some reports say that microplastics have been found in human placenta. So uh, I don't know if how many of you were aware of this news. Like this is something which needs, everybody needs to know about it because we can, Think how grave the situation have become, and even uh, even in breast milk, the co contaminants have been detected. So it's like having a cyborg baby, like kids with microplastics in them. Like uh, all these pollutants that we that we produced, they have started to come into our bodies as well. All of us must have studied about biomagnification and all those stuffs. So such things have started to affect us directly. It's it's high time that we start action. Even the recent IPCC report had said it's more dread for humanity. But I don't know how many of us have started taking this seriously. So now like if we are going to talk about the uh, effects of climate change, the impact it is going to have on us, it's such a wash, wash topic. You can say that everything, our day-to-day -day life, every, each and every aspect of our life is going to be affected. Now, uh, if you go more deeper into it, maybe uh, it may affect people's mental health, even thinking about how this is going to affect us. So let's keep that aside and think about what we can do, we as individuals, as engineers, as citizens of the nation can do to tackle climate change. Maybe that is the more positive aspect we can think about. That is something where we can create a change and bring about a change. So let's see what we can do. So the first thing we can do, like the one thing you have to keep in mind is about carbon footprint, isn't it? So carbon footprint 
uh, is the total amount of greenhouse gases that are generated by our actions. So all of us have a carbon footprint. Uh, industries have carbon footprint. Every action that we do uh, causes, generates some amount of greenhouse gases. So this amount of gas that is released is called uh, called as carbon footprint. This is just a, uh, just a uh, way to calculate our, the effect of our actions uh, to make it make an abstract con concept understandable to humans. We have used such things like carbon footprint. So let me start with a very trivial step, which is very useful in the digital era. That is delete your old emails. Like we all have, uh, I'm sure like, uh, the day I had realized this, that my old emails are causing, are one of the reasons for climate change. So uh, the day I realized this, I went went down to delete my old emails. And I had seen that emails from the days of my school days, like from my 10th standard, the emails I had received were still uh, there in my email, Gmail. So of course you can all, uh, all these unread emails and unwanted emails all co contribute to carbon emissions. So deleting these unwanted mails and even downloading your favorite songs uh, can help to reduce your carbon footprint because online streaming does require some, uh, does contribute some carbon uh, greenhouse gases. And so, yeah, I hope without forgetting, you will delete all those unwanted emails after this session. And the second thing is, uh, I had shown in the earlier slide that is causes of climate change. So we have seen that how production of goods are contributors of to climate change. So whenever, like say no to single use items, why am I saying that? Because whatever we produce is creating, is contributing to climate change change is, is contributing to the, is uh, producing greenhouse gases. So if we can reduce the amount of products that we are using. So the first thing would be to say no to single use items at the first and foremost step you can take. So uh, we can see that a wide range of our day to day utilities starting from a three rupee pen that we use, uh, tissue papers, paper cup and plates that have like, even though at the time, their uses had reduced, but now due to COVID pandemic, again, we have started to use this uh, single use paper cups and plates, which are uh, right now in this situation of COVID pandemic is essential, but at the same time, uh, we need to try to reduce dependence on them as well. And maybe uh, buying sealed water bottles and all. So these are some, some of the places where we are using single use items. So you can always think of uh, alternatives, like switching to an ink pen would be a classy and elegant alternative for widely used single use pens. Like, that is what I have been doing since last two years. I have been uh, using ink pens. So it is fairly cool and it feels so classy when you are writing with ink pen, but of course for uh, exams and all, uh, ink pen is not a viable solution, but of course, the in your for in your notebooks for rough works and all, you can always use ink pen. And also, in the case of uh, taking the pandemic into account, you can see that if carrying your pen with you wherever you go, with, rather than using the ones which are given maybe in banks or wherever you go, you may be needing a pen, and you may take the one which is available there. So the your chances of getting COVID is increasing, isn't it? So maybe somebody who had COVID earlier might have used that pen. So if you're carrying your own ink pen wherever you go, uh, that also helps to, uh, eat, like that is even a step to tackle COVID as well. Uh, and then you can carry a water bottle, maybe carry a steel straw. These are very small, small steps which you can do. Like along with the, mo we, we all never forget to carry our mobile phones, isn't it? So just like that, maybe we can carry a bag, having a bottle of water, a steel straw and sanitizer, of course. So such habits, small, maybe it's a small step, but of course it will go a long way in the long run. Uh, okay, now another one major single use item, which causes a huge headache 
for individuals as well as uh, institutions, whether it be colleges or schools or offices, we can see that uh, sanitary napkins, these cause a huge headache for both our users as well as uh, institutions as well. So I'm sure that everyone listening to this is either a menstruator or you do know somebody who is a menstruator. So switching to menstrual cups is one of a, a very drastic change that you could bring about in your life, which will, which I'm sure you'll be glad that you have made that change because once you overcome the initial fear and get an act of using these menstrual cups, I promise that there will be no going back. I, I, I know some of you, uh, it, this may sound very terrifying, but uh, once you are okay with it, once you are able to make the switch to menstrual cups, this is going to be the best change that you have ever made in your life. Uh, I can guarantee you that. And the third point written here is think. Is it a need or greed? So uh, it's very famous quote by Mahatma Gandhi. It says the earth have enough for every person's need, but it does not have enough for everybody's greed. That is a very, very meaningful quote, which we have heard a lot and maybe it have lost its value, but we can th think for a while. Like this quote have a lot to do in tackling climate change. Because uh, you can always think a hundred times. Please try to think a hundred times before we are going to buy anything new. Like, are there sustainable alternative to my needs? You can think about that. Is there a sustain? Is there a more sustainable choice before taking any decision? You can think about this. And also, always remember the three R concept: the reduce, reuse, recycle concept. Uh, whether it's buying a new dress or buying a gift for a friend or whatever it may be. Think for green alternatives. Think, think for sustainable zero waste alternatives. And the fourth point given here is about green protocol. So yeah, again, this topic is something which we have all heard most probably like green protocol is uh, the concept in which we try to minimize and uh, avoid the zero waste, uh, avoid the uh, single use items in our, uh, in any function that we may, we may be uh, conducting. So we can see that uh, when we are organizing a party or maybe when we are fun uh, organizing any kind of functions and all, ensure that we, can, we are uh, following the green protocol and we can try to find reasons to go zero waste rather than finding excuses for making irresponsible choices. So to the best of our ability, we can ensure that all the, uh, whether it is birthday parties or uh, um, any kind of functions, we can ensure that it is following green protocol. Even uh, these, uh, these days, even the government is uh, emphasizing on green protocol. And you can see that uh, in some venues, the, even the elections were held by following the green protocol during the COVID pandemic. So we can try that as well in on individual scale as well. And here the fourth point, I'm sorry, the fifth point I have given here is educate people. So of course, talk to people, talk to your friends, uh, talk to them about climate change and how it's going to impact each one of us, each one of our family members, how it's going to affect our physical health, our mental health, the kid, I mean, uh, health of our kids in future, how it is going to uh, cause trouble for us. We can talk about these things and try to sensitize people that this is not something that is happening in some other world or this is not something uh, which is limited in our books and news uh, like these days uh, news have started to come about climate change but until a few years ago all the climate change and uh, its effects were just limited to our books and it was limited to bookish knowledge but we need to realize that it is starting to affect each one of us and the climate models have started uh, started to show that what they predicted was true and if we are not starting to take action it is going to create a huge huge issue for all of us in the future and the last point is engineering solutions so of course as engineers uh, the future of society literally is in our hands like 
we can pledge to find technical solutions for climate change and uh, we can promise ourselves that wherever we are whatever we do we will always keep the environmental conservation aspects of our actions in our mind over the economic prospects because these days uh, we can see that most of the people think in terms of economic gain but we need to ensure that uh, we need to be alive we need to be healthy in order to enjoy the benefits of the economic gain that we have made so we need a uh, of course future uh, all activities is dependent on uh, engineers we can say that e e even as we are stepping to digital era we can see that everything is uh, we can create good solutions for the climate change aspect so these are some of the things we can do like just as i had said before uh, we can think even nature conservation biodiversity conservation these things these aspects the problem is that when we say about biodiversity conservation most of the people think about conserving some other animal we need to, we have all uh, studied about the food chain food web and all so when one species one animal species is becoming extinct it is invariably affecting us in the long run so we have to keep that in mind biodiversity conservation is not only about conserving the other animals it's about helping ourselves so we can see that thing green this is what i have been try, trying to put out through throughout this time that is thing green uh, whatever you do understand that this is a very grave situation and we need to uh, think in thing green and ensure that whatever we do we think about the climate aspect of our actions as well so this is just a slide which says uh, we need to change before our planet does okay now coming to the last part we can say that is career and climate action so uh, this must be interesting i don't know i have not heard anyone talk about this this aspect that is career and climate aspect climate action because uh, we can say that climate action is indeed the need of our there is no question about it and engineering solutions for tackling climate change has huge huge scope in future this without doubt you can say about uh, you can be sure about that so uh, maybe we can try to go through some topics presented before in color your space and we can see how we can use this for climate action so the first session was unity game development isn't it so we can see that how can uh, a game developer like game development is considered to be will be gaining um, more uh, demand will be having more demand in future like uh, a billion dollar industry it is going to be game development that is what i have i had heard somewhere so of course game development is some, having a huge future uh, we know that so how can you use game development to convey the message of climate change so game developers can think about that how can they use the uh, use their knowledge in game development to convey messages about climate change so maybe uh, we uh, like a, a game developer may develop a game in which there is a, a character and then he makes he or she when they make a sustainable choice they will be awarded points else uh, when they make the wrong choice uh, their life will be gone so such a uh, small small games for kids uh, for kids of course like i don't i don't know if the adults would be interested in playing such games because of course we need action filled games as well so maybe kids would be uh, kids are the future so if we can instill in them the values of sustainable uh, practices of zero waste practices through games that would be a wonderful idea i feel so i don't know uh, i don't know if you agree with me but i think that's a that would be a nice initiative so if there are any game developers you can try that think about that uh the next topic was an introduction to typography so uh, this was taken by my junior yama so of course 
you know typography or any art artistic things for that matter uh, we can use them for conveying climate change messages for sensitizing people of course so uh, whether you are a uh, not only about typography you can make creative designs like we have heard that uh, the digital thing stays in a person's mind more than what we talk or what we read and all so uh, using typography or using digital marketing techniques to convey the message of climate change the uh, need of climate action is a power it, this is a powerful tool i feel so and then uh, how to pick a right business idea so this was a very uh, good topic so uh, very interesting topic uh, those who have not heard may go to the kerala sections youtube channel and check this out uh, and as well as all other topics as well so one thing the speaker has emphasized was that good problems are popular growing and mandatory uh, mandatory in the sense need to be solved as soon as possible so the speaker during the session has said that if your idea like if if any if anyone is uh, thinking about turning into an entrepreneur if your idea uh, needs to flourish it needs to be popular growing in demand and uh, it must be an issue which needs to be solved as soon as possible so uh, the speaker has said that if your idea is having at least one of these aspects then of course it will help uh, it will help to, it will probably uh, flourish easier easily so we can see that climate change is such a topic uh, climate uh action that like even small small steps uh, practices and all uh, we can see that all these aspects that is it is popular it is growing of course climate impact is growing and we need the solution as soon as possible all three aspects apply to climate change so we can think about this as well isn't it so i think this was informative for you so if you have any queries yeah, of course youtube chat is right you can ask in that and this is my email id and social media platforms so you may connect there as well so uh, if you have liked the presentation uh, the template was created from slide scope so digital creators can use that as well so i hope uh, whoever i have listened to the session like heard heard me till now must have got at least one takeaway from the session and i i hope that uh, if you have not yet started uh, any uh, like switching to sustainable practices thinking seriously about climate change i hope that this is the this will become a uh, this will ignite the flame in you to start being more uh, start being a climate activist maybe so that's it thank you one and all yeah thank you and uh, we have a set of questions that have come up um so i would read that for you uh, the first question is what are the risk and negative impacts of climate change on employment okay so thinking uh, while talking about employment you can see that climate change will hugely uh, like we can see the impacts of climate change is going to affect all of us so coming specifically to employment we can see uh, if we take the case of covid 19 pandemic we have seen that how everything was on a standstill for a long time so uh, due to climate change extreme weather events are going to happen so during such conditions many people will be displaced from their from their homes so that will negatively impact the employment aspects as well and uh, uh, maybe like let me think about it maybe uh, if the if this climate act, uh, climate change is increasing day by day that maybe people uh, the companies might try to uh, reduce the number of employments i don't know if that makes sense like yeah maybe so that can one of the major issues will be these uh, 
extreme weather events that will of course impact all of us so this can lead to uh, unemployment because when such things happen the owners of the company will be trying to maximize their products and all, all those things will adversely affect us i hope i made sense uh, was it clear yeah it was clear okay yeah so uh, if that was you're okay with that question we'll move to the next one uh, yeah uh, if the person who have asked question have feedback then i will go to it again so we can move on to next question yeah uh, we'll check on that okay so another question that have come up is how can deleting email reduce my carbon footprint okay so the thing is all these emails that we store that uh, that is in our email these are stored in huge servers so whether it be google or anything so these are stored in huge servers so these servers require electricity uh, they run on electricity it's a huge infrastructure which we don't see but these are stored in such huge servers so uh, if all of us are uh, trying to delete all those data those uh, unwanted data storing data processing data all this causes carbon emission that is uh, storage uh, requires carbon uh, i mean emits carbon footprint so these servers uh, the amount of data storage if we can reduce on the servers it will help uh, it was not uh, i did not come up with it uh, it is uh, a report is there that if you can, if you are deleting the ex with exact calculation it is available in google you can check it out i think it was an interesting fact isn't it uh, when i first read it it was i felt it is very interesting as well so i hope i answered the question yeah yeah uh, another question is is sustainable development the only ultimate solution to climate changes yeah so uh, when we talk about sustainable development the concept is that we are meeting our present day's requirement and also ensuring that it uh, it is there for future generations as well so sustainable development will ensure that uh, the greenhouse emissions that is coming is reduced isn't it um, that is uh, sustainable development i think that is the uh, any anything that you do sustainably is ultimately going to help in tackling climate change all any alternative that you think needs to be sustainable only then that will be helping in climate change that's what i feel sustainable in the sense it needs to uh, ensure that it is a long run solution because uh, if if we are depending on fossil fuels you can see that it will uh, fossil fuels will deplete over time so we are switching to uh, solar panels or wind wind energy so these things are renew uh, in the sense they, they are sustainable why are they sustainable they will uh, they will be there for a long period of time so such things uh, these uh, solutions are there for long period of time and so whatever sustains on a longer run that is basically what sustainable development is so you can say that whatever solution you are coming up for climate change uh, climate change solution whatever you are coming up will be uh, invariably sustainable that's what i feel yeah uh, yeah that is all for the questions that we had so with this we conclude today's session of color space thank you archana for an amazing talk hope this session was enlightening and i'd also like to extend my gratitude towards the organizers as well as the audience for being a part of this session until next time good night thank you anand